Hi, I'm Sam and welcome to the USA. It's not somewhere I've spent a ton of time. I've spent a little bit of time, I've not driven around here very much. We're over in California, in Monterey. I'm here for car week and I'm here with Bonhams. Today we're going to drive something pretty interesting, but before that, let's do a little flash through of some of the things that are here. What have we got here? Oh, lovely 300 SL Roadster and Goldwing, sort of matching pair. Might be a good dual purpose if you're into your Mercedes. Love to, I'd love to have a go in one of them at some point. Z8, coming back into cool. I've never driven a Z8. And this one is a manual. I think, that, I think that's probably a lovely, lovely thing. I think they're more of a sort of GT car than an outright sports car, which now they're a bit older, probably suits them a little bit, a little, their vibe a little better. Now, what, what is this? I think this is pretty cool. Old Ferrari, let's go and read this, read the stuff. 1951 Ferrari 212 into alloy coupe, which has had the coachwork done by Gear. This is basically one of six Truly unique, hand-built, put in a like, you know, big luggage space in the back. Ah, I, think that's, I think that's a pretty cool thing. The interior is lovely, a very nice, classy color combination. Obviously, I'm a fan, I'm a fan of blue. 350 GT Coupe Lamborghini. Ah, there's something about, I'm not a massive Lambo fan, but these sort of old, older GT cars that they used to make, I think, well, that's, that's kind of cool. Is it cooler than a Ferrari? I'm not sure. No, it's probably not cooler than a Ferrari, but it's something a bit different, a Lambo GT Coupe. This is, this is quite an interesting one. It's a, what is it? It's a V550 or something like that. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, 1995 V8 Vantage V550 Coupe. So all of the power, 550 horsepower, supercharged V8, one of 239, has more horsepower than a brand new V8 Vantage F1 edition. Just a kind of absolute bruiser from the past. Quite cool. And then we've got, we've got the Porsche section. There's, there's a lot of 356s and old 911s. So this is a Prie. Very classic color. Not, not one for me, that black Speedster though. That's very cool. Very cool. Although I would have my Speedster in this color combination. This is, a, this is lovely. Look at this. So this, is a, this is a 356C, which I'm learning all about these things as we go along, really, um, and which are some of the later cars. So this is a 1963, it's got a sunroof, but it's in this fun, really fun blue with a lovely creamy tan interior. Look at that. That is very nice. This, I think actually of all the ones here, I'm partial to a blue, but this sort of maroony color is lovely. So this is a two litre car. This is a 68, so it's a later car. Uh, I think if you want to race these, you need to have a 65, 66 car. Um, but actually the 68, it's still a short wheelbase, still the same engine, but they're like half the money because they're not eligible. I don't know why, why that is, why you have to have the 65, 66. I guess it's relative to the other cars that are racing that series, but this, this is lovely, this thing. I'm a, st I'm a stickler for, for 911s and Porsches, unfortunately, just is, it's the way it is. But an early, I kind of would like an early car at some point in my life in the garage. Need a bit more garage space and a few more spare fun coupons. 996.2 GT3. I think this is a, a great modern classic and, I, and this, the shape is getting better with time. It really is. So people didn't like the lights. One of my first memories of a sports car is a 996.2 GT3 in black I went on a track day with a friend of mine and his mate 
and his mate had an M3 CSL, and this was, I was probably 18, so 10 years ago, so they, they were quite sort of newish then, and very, ah, oh, they're just cool, and I think now, can you get the Porsche system on 906 and you've got CarPlay and stuff like that? I think you can. Um, and then you've got a very modern, very fun performance car that's not crazy fast, but fast enough. Not tons of grip. Yeah, 996.2 GT3, I think that's a buy, that's a buy. This section is just not, it's, I don't know, I don't know anything about these. I'm gonna have a chat with some of the guys and get them to tell me some interesting facts because I bet there is a world of these look like, they kind of look like Formula One cars, but I think these are just like heavily modified, well, they're specials. Yeah, I'm interested to know what's going on with these. I'm gonna ask someone about it. Big bad boy Benzes, 500 SEC, massive boot, height of luxury in their day. Just pretty comfy. I love the boxy style now. That's a, this is a very cool green as well. So this is an 82 Mercedes-Benz 500 SEC. And this has got a big engine in it. Five litre V8, only 230 horsepower. But big boxy Merc. Yeah, these things are cool now. I think so anyway. You can see the styles change as we sort of go back in time and they get towards the, the 300s and stuff from back then. This is the tent. One of the interesting things about this sale versus some other ones is the cars all have to drive on to the lot and they drive on auction, drive off, which we don't see in the UK. I don't think at all, I might be wrong, but we don't really see. And then if, it, if they don't start then they get pushed. But at the moment during setup, there's a lot of batteries wandering around, cars getting, getting checked over and whatnot. 993 GT2. The people that bought them sent me a list of, um, of all the cars in the auction and said, yeah, what do you want to drive? What do you want to take for a spin? And I had a little look at the list and very quickly said, I want to drive a 993 GT2, please. Uh, it's only got 5,000 kilometers, so maybe that won't be possible. Like, well, we'll have a look. Got here this morning, like, yeah, cool. When do you want to go? So <laughs> I'm going to take 993 GT2 for a spin, but let's have a quick little look around first and then let's go for a drive. Right, Sam, talk me through 993 GT2. 993 generation, so what was that, 1995? Based off the turbo, we had a bunch of different parts put on. We had brakes, suspension, wheels, everything was uprated to cope with the additional downforce from this whopper of a wing. And I love these intakes, so cool. And if you've ever seen the race cars, the GT2s, they do the like double stacker thing at the back. Split rims. It's just a cool thing. So, rock, but because they made it rear wheel drive and they used some lightweight parts and whatnot, the GT2 was 300 kilos lighter. 300 kilos lighter than the turbo that it was based on. That is a lot of weight. The weight saving was used was through the use of aluminium body panels, lightweight racing seats, deletion of many of the interior fittings, uh, including the, the turbo soundproofing and rear seats. We had the sort of cut away fenders and stuff, and these cars were rated at around 430 horsepower, which back then was an absolutely obscene amount of power, making this thing incredibly quick. I think at the time, the only car that was faster to 60, faster to was the McLaren F1. But, and we have a little mooch around the inside. The 993 interior. No seats in the rear, all the sort of lightweight carpeting and stuff. These lightweight bucket seats, which are just sat in and they're super comfy, super comfy. This, just look at, look at all this padding. Look at that. That is missing from some modern cars. Manual gearbox, rear wheel drive. Yeah, this should be fun. Let's have a little look in the front. What have we got in here? Oh, super stripped out. You can see everything. Big anti-roll bar. This interior bit, okay, that just clips on there. Just looking for somewhere to put my bag, so I'll probably put my bag in there. Let's see if we can go and have a look in the boot. So there should be a switch, a uh, full cable there. And that means it's open. 
Ah, <laughs> classic Porsche. Can't see much in there, but it's a bit of a beast. Right, we're just getting in the car. I say we're getting in the car. I'm in the car with Adrian, who's sitting next to me. He, you won't be able to see, but he's, he's here. We're in the GT2. Gonna go for a little drive. It's got a dead battery, so <laughs> I've been told not to stall, which is not something I ever worry about, unless someone says don't stall it. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but we've got a jump start. Do you know if this moves? I don't, I don't think so. Gonna work with the legs. So this car is 5,000 kilometers. 5,000 kilometers from you, one on a car, one of the 57 street legal. Wow, that makes it pretty rare. Right, let's, let's go. Right, so this is my first time driving a Porsche in the States, which is quite fun, because I've driven a lot of, I've driven a lot of Porsches, <laughs> driven a, the 993, if you look back to probably my last video, was a, an, another 993, but heavily modified, done very recently. So it's quite fun to drive another 993 back to back and see what it's like. But this one is a super hardcore version, the GT2. Starting to hear the, let's put my sunglasses on. Starting to hear the noises from the car. Sounds like a Porsche, but heavily muted by the turbos. Now we're just sort of, Pootling along at the moment. Okay, my speedo's in kilometres, so I'll have to do a bit of a, a bit of mental math to make sure we're going the right speed. Take a little bit of time to warm up the car. This car's for sale, so I'm not gonna just rag it. <laughs> it's someone else's car, and it is literally going up for sale in the two days, so you can check it out on the the Bonhams Auction website. But it's so nice driving in California. I've seen so many photos, so many images, and actually one of the things. I don't think it's necessarily California specific, but just straight in the USA is having two yellow lines in the middle of the road, just like sets the scene of that you're in somewhere else. The GT2, so heavily turbocharged. I'm expecting slightly sort of F40 S vibes in terms of power delivery. Um, I think it's a single turbo. Twin turbocharge. Oh, it's a twin, twin turbo. turbocharge, yes. So there's a bit of like, a, we got a bit of a stage this car is 300 kilos lighter than the turbo. Yeah. Which is, that's, that's a, that is a huge difference. Huge. And the car does feel, it feels sort of light. There's lightweight glass. You can hear a reasonable amount of road noise in here, but let's, let's make a bit of noise. Okay, things about the GT2. Steering, the steering is not adjustable, which is quite, it's quite fun. Yeah. And then I'm used to, like, like in my F40, you've got to adjust your seating so that your steering is... I, I think if I had... I wonder if you could put a spacer on something like this. Just make it a little bit closer and then then you could not have your legs quite so close. But it's not too bad. Like, it's, it's perfectly fine. I think heel and toe, I would probably want to put my seat a little bit further back just to give myself a little bit more leg room. Nice steering wheel. I've got an airbag. That's quite a nice... Thing that we see see removed in a lot of a lot of modern resto mod stuff. Save your face. So low down, we don't have too much power. So that was like two, three thousand RPM, like flat. It's building, but we're not like not in the power band yet. I've got a car in front, so obviously I'm not going to drive into the back of them. But the gear stick seems pretty good. I'm slightly aware the the gaps between the gates are quite close and it's quite easy to do second rather than fourth. So something you've definitely got to be aware of, of like pushing it slightly to the side. So I didn't, I didn't quite shut my, my door when I got in the car. I guess that's the thing with lightweight doors and stuff like that. You're never really sure until you know the car how much you need to slap, sort of pull it shut. But immediately, actually, I was getting quite a lot of wind noise from here, and I thought maybe it was just the glass windows. But as soon as you shut the door, I'm immediately hearing a lot more engine, and there is just, it's just, there's like nothing there. Bit of lightweight carpet. We've also got a bit of a gap in front.
this car feels really stripped out. Like, it's just, it's definitely something you notice straight away. Everything feels kind of, it feels light. Steering, I'm getting so much feeling through the steering wheel. That sort of like gritty analog feedback that you just don't get in a modern electronic system. <laughs> and the road is like slightly bumpy and I'm feeling everything. It feels like, it is a much rawer experience than a normal C2 or something like that. We've got some good roads as well. I am feeling so much of the road in this car, like a lot more than any car I've driven recently, which you can't, you can't really drive that fast here. You actually probably wouldn't want to drive that fast here because the roads are so twisty. But having that extra bit of involvement from whether it's an engine note or sound that's coming from outside. They're the things that make cars more fun at lower speeds. And as silly as it is, or it might not sound silly, it doesn't sound silly to me, going for a more extreme build or a more extreme version of a car, they're much more fun at lower speeds, unless you go for a much older car, in which case it's you're sort of a different type of thing, you've got less grip. But just at this speed, which is like, what, 50 miles an hour or something? You're getting so much more out of the experience. So we're gonna probably pull over in a minute somewhere, have a little walk around in the car, and then get back in and cruise back the other way. Oh, getting out of the car, being for a little, little bit of a first drive, as you <laughs> gotta leave the car on, because we're not quite sure it needs a new battery. Um, and, and just being told you can't stall this car, otherwise you're stuffed. But it's, it's a fun one, it's a fun one. It's, I'm not sure, like the, the turbocharged experience has its sort of pluses and minuses, doesn't it? It's, you get all that extra power and actually you get the sort of boostiness. This car, when you're out of it, and I, because of the, the gear shift is really close in between the different sort of like lines, and what that means is I keep changing from second to fifth rather than to third, and then you just, the car just drops right out. But the more you drive it, the better you like sort of work that stuff out and pick up the differences. And it's so raw. It's so much rawer than they even, like that Paul Stevens car that I just drove, but that was not, not meant to be like this. It's all, all the light weighting, 300 kilos lighter than a turbo. And there's just nothing between you and that engine in the back. It's, it's a fun thing, it's a fun thing. So let's get back in the car. I'm gonna take a few photos and then we're gonna go drive back the other way. Parked up again, the engine's still running, don't want to stall it. Let's get out. That resounding little clunk. Well, if I walk this way a little bit, hopefully I won't get run over by someone. You can see the car. Wow, that's looking pretty cool, isn't it? Lovely vineyard in the background. Not get run over by someone running a bit too wide. But what do we think of the GT2? I, it's just such a cool thing, isn't it? It's so cool. It's a Porsche. It's a rare one. So rare these now. This has got a price estimate. What's the estimate? Let's go have a little look. Estimate of 850,000 to 1.2 million dollars. Well, if you want something a bit different and a bit special from Porsche, that's probably, I say probably, will appreciate in value over time because you just can't get them anymore. And these things are going electric. And the GT2 version, so raw. If you wanted something to just go and drive a road like this for 30 minutes and have an awesome time, but also could put some luggage in the back, put some luggage in the front, seats are super comfy. When you're just cruising along, it's not too loud. Yeah, very, very cool. And what a scenery and what a place 
to be having a look around and driving a cool car. And that is going to be a sign off for me, the GT2. Very cool thing. Super raw, super engaging. Oh, it takes, it's going to take some learning, I think. I need to drive it. I need to drive it a little bit more um, to get used to the gear stick. Just the shift is just so narrow, that gate. It's so easy to just get it wrong. I've not got it wrong in a down way, but I've just got it wrong in an up which you just drop out of the power band and you want to be in that power band to get all that power just coming in. So that's going to be a sign out from me from here. Probably head back to base and I'll see you guys in the next video.